Well, it's another day. And that means another video. Or more to the point, numerous more repairs. This one's a personal one today. Some of you might recognize a box like this. It's a little bit dirty. Now, this one's been around quite some time. And this speckling you see here is, looks like it's molten white metal that's splattered up on the side of the case. Um, I picked this particular thing up about eight, almost ten years ago at a hard waste collection. And you'll probably identify this as a sewing machine. This is a Singer sewing machine. It also happened to come with all the accessories that was being disposed of. Now, I diagnosed this ages ago, and there's a piece of broken plastic. I don't know where that's come from. Uh, I diagnosed this ages ago with a problem with the... Uh, there's two little spur gears in here that drive the bobbin. I have to remember my sewing machine terminology. It's been a while since I've played with a sewing machine. But, uh, yeah, so the main job here, I'm going to identify the parts that are the problem here. Um, and I'm going to try and design and 3D print a replacement spur gear. I do know I can get replacement parts for this, but they are quite expensive for something that I'm not entirely sure that that's the only thing that's broken. What I do like about this and why I'm trying to repair it, aside from it being somewhat vintage, is that it's mostly cast iron. It's a very, very heavy unit. Uh, and that's a good attribute to have in a sewing machine. And uh, I just really appreciate there's always got to be a notification, really, all the time. It's very frustrating. Um, one of the main reasons I appreciate this is the mechanical way in which it does all this. There's no solenoids or servos. It's all mechanical linkages. So a little bit of common sense and staring at it for a while usually reveals most of the problems with it. So uh, let's get on to uh, opening this up. Now, one of the main indicators here that uh, something is wrong is when I rotate the drive manually, we can see down in this hole in here where the bobbin would normally live, that little mechanism there that feeds the loop of thread around the needle um, is not moving. And it did for about half a turn before I uh, actually started filming. And so the problem here is probably that there's some broken teeth in there which are, from memory, they were plastic gears or Teflon. And that can generally happen if you uh, break a needle or something gets jammed. If I'm really lucky, I might be able to make a mold of the original gears and I'll cast them in white metal. And that might even make a permanent repair. Okay, so we have the service cover off. It's one of the things I like about these older machines. That and um, the earlier ones than this used to have some steel gears and... Uh, various other formulations of gear. Plastic gears I'm not a fan of, but um, I do like this overall design as opposed to some of the modern things. In any case, we can see that these two gears are working here. This is the bobbin drive. And as we come around, it suddenly stops. And I'll pick some more fluff out of here. And now this has a whole bunch of slack. And you might almost be able to see that there's some missing teeth there. So that's our culprit. We're going to have to remove that. If I can mesh the gears here, it might almost start rotating again if we can do this right. There we go. So on top now, and there is definitely a fracture in that gear. So there's a little thumb screw here, or grub screw. We'll remove those two and take this gear off, and we'll see what we can model. Now, I could be using a hex driver here, but I'm actually using a Torx driver because they still will engage. But this was the size that I had in my kit that will fit. I'm not removing this grub entirely because I just want to loosen them. And there's two of them here. Hopefully if I loosen these just comfortably, it should just drop off. And before you start um, telling me about the calibration and whatnot, um, simply because this has been broken and ro rotated many times since I found it, they're already out of calibration. I'll have to work that out afterwards. But we can clearly see here, where's my lens? About there. So we can see the busted teeth have come off here. So uh, I've got a little bit of measuring and a bit of 3D designing to do here. And I'll also have a look online and see if the replacement gears are still available. This might be something generic that I can make.
printing booth here just about to start printing and that's what a hundred millimeters of filament gets you and it's cooling quickly but I can still squish it and then it'll be as hard as rock in a few minutes <laughs> all right so we're about to start printing and uh, we'll get some of this extra stuff out of the way and uh, you will have seen the whole print process already completed in the little montage but uh, this is the actual physical printing of it. Alright, so we're just coming down to calibrate. Um, it's going to come all the way down to, if we can focus on it, this little limit switch right here. That will tell us it's at the Z-axis correct height. It takes a little while. I had it way up there to uh, add new filament. This is PLA filament that's been out in the air a little while. I'm hoping it won't snap. It's the very last dregs of the roll, so I'm just trying to get rid of it at this stage. The bed's warm. We've got to wait for the extruder to heat up. It shouldn't take too long. There we go. Now I need to let go of my camera for a minute and do a quick Z-axis adjustment because there's often a little bit of play in the system. This is why I have a printer brim first. All right, you should be able to see, it's starting to print here, it's a little bit messy at the moment because I've got the filament all over the extruder. And that little clunk means it's slipped filament slightly. So I probably don't have the calibration strictly correct. I have since found I can buy these things for about $5 out of China, but I don't want to wait two weeks. I'll probably order a couple as a backup but uh, yeah, we'll go from there. In any case, I'm going to jump to the completed print because I think this thing's slightly out of calibration on the X axis. So we'll see if what we have actually fits. So there's some very fine work happening here. Let's see how we go with digital zoom. Some very fine work happening under the printer here to get those gear teeth. Let's hope this actually fits. Now, I've just removed the base plate just to have a closer inspection. I heard something rattling around. As it turns out, it was a sewing machine needle. I guess I'm going to have one I can use to test. And this happened to be jammed in the same drive shaft 
particularly this one here, was jammed on the tail end of this in here. I think namely in that section right there. That drive shaft runs all the way through to our jammed gear. So I have an inkling that could perhaps have had something to do with why that drive uh, broke, but uh, I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. On the plus side, the armature and the stator and all that of the um, motor in here all looks very, very clean and very good. And I've just heard my 3D printer park its head, so let's go check that out. So here's our 3D printed gear, and it's glossy black, unphotogenic material. I'm not going to touch this while it's still warm. I'm going to let the bed cool off and then give it a clean up. But looking at it on the face of it, it might not be the most effective gear. Given the resolution of this printer, I might be forced to buy some. But uh, we'll see what happens. So a uh, quick Google search while I've been waiting reveals that the a full set of gears is about $9 Australian. Well, that will be really handy. I think I might order that in the next couple of days. And uh, I'll wait for that to arrive. Okay, so let's just check if these gears mesh. This is kind of tiny photography. They do kind of mesh. And they don't interfere anyway, so that's the main thing. I guess we'll see once we get them on the spindle, but... Uh, this is our finished product. It's a little hard to see on camera, being black, but it's not ideal. But it might get it working enough until the new gears arrive. And it has seemed to have printed fairly accurately as far as the size goes. So I guess we've got to take this out in the shed and we'll punch this old gear off now that I know I can get new ones. So let's uh, go do that. Okay, we're out in the workshop here. And we've got some things to do. I need to punch this gear out. And I need to avoid the grub screws in the process. I'm just going to sit this in here loose. I can still sort of rock around. That should mean I can punch it out. And hopefully I should be able to press this on the top without breaking it. Now, I need to find something to punch this out with. I don't have a whole lot by way of pin punches in this size. So I'm going to have to improvise. And uh, at this point, I'm probably going to use a spade bit and just rotate that round as I go. And I hope it doesn't mess up that collet. Although with the new gears I plan to earn, uh, order, that shouldn't be a problem. And I have my um, improvised hammer as well. I do have a proper hammer, but I wanted something a little more precise. And that seemed to do the job just nicely. Except everything's all over the floor. Well, instead, it just chipped the brittle bits off the gear. And I can see under here there's actually some teeth that uh, are actually embedded in that middle bit. So it looks like these are moulded on there. So I guess I can probably just crush them off there. I don't think I can do much more with a pin punch anymore. And I think the probably the sewing machine oil they use probably caused these gears to get brittle over the, over time. See, now that's just crumbling off there. So we'll give that a bit of a tap with a hammer and see what we can do. I have a small hammer just for the purpose around here somewhere. Here it is. And we should be able to just chip all this off. See, now it's coming off nicely. A little bit more here. This might require some improvising. The rest of this, I'll chip off off camera the rest of this and we'll get on to, we might even um, heat up this part and sit it on the top and let it mould in there. That might work, but we'll be back in a moment. Okay, it's D-Day. We have all of the material chipped off this and we have our sort of okay gear that might do the job. We also have a gas torch, a piece of wood and a piece of steel. Interestingly enough this is actually a piece of steel out of a uh, Telstra dummy modem that's usually used in store displays 
So when you pick them up and they feel heavy and valuable, it's actually a hunk of six mil steel in the middle <laughs> with a foam pad to stop it rattling. It's uh, very interesting. So I'm going to keep this gear well out of the way so I don't get any stray heat. It's time to heat this up, which could take a little while. We need to heat this up hot enough that it will melt plastic. So in this case, it needs to be around about 200 degrees Celsius, ideally about 230. But um, being a fairly sizable chunk of metal, I assume it's going to have some fairly good thermal properties. So once we do get it on here, I'm probably going to have to leave it alone for a while. The other problem you have with such a situation is that if you don't get it hot enough, it'll get stuck halfway and you've pretty much got to start the whole process all over again. Now I would get an IR thermometer on this, but in the time it takes me to check it, it's usually cooled off. So we'll just keep going around here. I'm just going to take a bet and say that's about right temperature. I'm going to drop our hunk of steel on the top here. And we shagged it. Alright, fingers it is. Alright, that's pretty well resting <laughs> way too high at the moment, but we'll get there. We'll push it down. Now that it's on, I can use the hunk of steel to push everything down like a plastic sandwich. That looks to be very, very close. I don't want to bust off any of the fins or the gear teeth or I'll be back to square one. Alright, so that is on there. That's going to have to cool for a bit. And there, it has mushed in between the gear teeth a little bit. I don't expect that will cause a huge problem. In fact, it might even make it a little stronger. Um, that side is still not quite even. A little bit of pressure on that side. Oh, and now I've melted some fins. That's not good, but I didn't expect this to be perfect anyway. What we might do is just get a screwdriver in there and try and avert the crisis. I have a little itty bitty screwdriver here. And sorry if my hands are in the way, guys. I'm trying to work in a hurry here to try and avoid some sort of a disaster here. I'm just correcting these fins, and as I expected, this piece has quite a large amount of thermal capacity and it's continuing to soften the plastic so I'm just trying to position everything where it should go before it solidifies again because PLA once it's solid is pretty tough stuff which is also why I opted to go with this material for printing I could have gone with ABS but my experience is that ABS can get to be a little brittle. It can also be quite a challenging material to print. Alright, I think I've got that largely got that largely settled, so I'm gonna leave that alone for a bit now. I'm gonna leave it to cool off. Um, I would drop it in some cold water or whatnot, but I'm worried that the thermal contraction will probably damage it. So um yeah, let's see how we go. In fact, I might stick it on this. It might act as a heat sink. That might help cool it off, and I'll put some fan cooling on it somewhere. In fact, I can bring over my cooling vent from here, and I believe that is my output. And we'll suck some air over it. Hopefully that'll cool it off gently without contracting it and busting it. Anyway, back when this is cool. Okay, so things have cooled off. I cheated and used a little bit of water, but uh, I did manage to help disperse the water using some genuine Singer oil. I've been using that stuff for years, and it's really, really good for many things. Now, we're not worrying about calibration just now. I just want to see if the gears mesh and nothing breaks. So we're just going to fit this gear on and see if it does what it's supposed to do. Well turns and it doesn't jam and that looks good 
and there's next to no gear play but it's not stiff to turn so that actually might be really good so now I've got to learn how to properly calibrate the bobbin I know roughly how to get it right but I need to look up some specifics on the internet if that works we might even be successfully sewing some stuff later tonight but we'll find out now before I get around to calibrating things some of the movements in this are quite stiff so I'm just putting the slightest little drop of oil on all the moving parts and bushed bearings and all the rest just to free things up and it has freed up quite significantly since I've started doing that so um, particularly this little section here has started to move very freely now so um, this is looking good that's a cam driven system as well that might be an interesting idea to 3d print or laser cut some different cams for different stitching effects but uh, right well let's get around to some research and we'll be back the new gear is fitted and I'm pretty sure the timing is right and we should be looking at down about here a little timing mark should just show up right about here okay so I'm pretty sure that's at the start of the needle descending our forks move along and somewhere about here we might need some better lighting let's see if we can get some better lighting in here so you guys can see as we come around here that little gap where you saw the timing mark there's another gap coming soon and this is the hook right there you can see in the gap right here there's a little hook coming past as the needles at its lowest point as it starts to pull up the loop of thread should create a nice loop I guess that hook should grab it spin it around forming the bottom half of the stitch and as we come around our hook does another loop to return it and needle goes in again and starts to open the loop and our hook grabs that and comes up again I'm pretty sure that should work I just need to find a bobbin now I haven't got one spare I guess I could 3d print one I could probably laser cut a more accurate one but I guess we'll figure something out for that now lighting isn't quite the best at the moment but I thought I'd just show you I've been over with the singer oil in the background there and lubricated all the moving sections that looks like a bit of crud right there it's actually a little felt sponge I presume for holding oil I've been all through the mechanisms up along the top here and lubricated everything it seems to be running fairly smoothly it does feel a little lumpy but that's probably because of the 3d printed gear but this might do to prove a concept and if everything else works then I'll invest in some proper gears for it well it's come to smoke test time so this is the original foot controller that appears to be made out of Bakelite it's got that very Bakelite-y feel to it but it's still in good condition uh, further to that is the plug with the exposed screws that doesn't classify as safe and I do actually have my ASNZS 3760 uh, certificate for safety testing so that will probably get the plug replaced um, this what might look deceptively like a Molex plug, but in actual fact, it's something specific to Singer. Uh, however, the rubber seems in to be in good contact or in good condition. The contacts are not shorting out. I've given this a quick test over with the insulation tester, and the motor armature seems to stack up, and there's no earth faults on the chassis. So I feel fairly safe plugging this in nevertheless I still have an RCD involved in this so that um, I don't actually electrocute anybody including myself so let's smoke test this okay I've still got all the covers off but it's plugged in so let's not stick our fingers in the top here <laughs> now there's a switch on the side it's armed and ready to go let's use my hand on the foot controller well, I hear a buzz that's a good sign it sounds good but it sounds like the needle is colliding well it sounds like that's going to move okay 
it hasn't blown up. Let's see if the needle is going to collide. I'm having a close look here. I'll bring the camera up in a minute. No, I think the sound I'm hearing is coming from somewhere else. Well, it's now the next day. And uh, I had my mother over last night for quite some time. Whom is the... Um, daughter of a professional dressmaker and uh, she's very well versed with this stuff and so we got to the bottom of some things and I managed to pilfer a bobbin and I have been a few issues with this bobbin assembly and we'll try and demonstrate that here I first have to thread the bobbin here and put the foot plate back in put all this back in here now normally when you thread this bobbin I can get my hands in the right way so the other thing I discovered here is the needle uh, the original needle I had was bent I managed to pill for a spare one off my mother as well um, now I did get my timing correct so when you wind this all through and this goes down I'm going backwards here this should go down and should make us a loop which it should then grab it was grabbing the loop pretty reliably last night. See how we go. I should bring that over the top. The problem I was having here is when it's grabbing the loop it was actually going underneath the top of the bobbin here um, because this bobbin casing is actually meant to take a dome headed bobbin. And I'm having trouble finding those locally but uh, let's see if I can get this to actually do what it's intended to do. Here we go. It's grabbed. Oh it's going to go over the top of the bobbin. That actually looks like it's completing a successful stitch. So this little steel bobbin that I got given just this morning might actually do the job. And yes, I'm sorry if my speech is suffering a little bit here. I'm sort of concentrating on what I'm doing. Um, so that should be right. We've got a successful stitch there. Okay, so my lovely wife has done a bit of shopping for me and uh, in replacement for these bobbins we got these bobbins and they're domed on the top you can see them side by side there now these ones when they go into the bobbin case here I need to make sure these are spinning the right way they sit very flush so the fabric should or the thread rather should slide right over the top so we need to thread this now and it also makes threading it much easier as well so let's clear this off and see how the new bobbins work. I'll be happy if this works. Alright, got our needle threaded here. Let's put a gentle bit of tension on here. Now, am I going the right way here? Well, I'm about to tip everything off the bench because the LRFs are damaged. Okay, let's see how we go now. That is, I believe, the correct way. Put that in there. Let's see. Bit of gentle tension in here should grab the loop and pass it over the top of the bobbin and drag that in and then we have a thread up here that is what I'd like to see okay so let's go straight thread and center position on the needle and um, let's try a fold of our workshop rag I guess let's see how we go here let's see a little bit of slow movement so far this is looking good, although I think the tension roller is a little bit loose, but we'll fix that later. See if we can get a full stitch through here. Looks to be going quite nicely. Alright. Now apparently we have a reverse for the foot. up here and we'll do a little bit of trimming here quickly I really need to get some proper dressmaker scissors but for now we'll trim all this off and I nearly lost my bobbin in there let's have a look at what we've done let's move all the way back here and have a look at our stitch 
our stitch actually looks relatively good. So this is our stitch thread here and we can try and separate these two bits and we can see it's a nice tight strong stitch. So I am actually quite pleased with that. So that certainly means that I'll be buying the proper gear set for that. Um, and for the record, uh, we've got plastic machine bobbins. We've got a whole bunch of these. So I think I'm going to load a few of these up with some thread. But uh, that pretty well concludes all I can do with this for now. Um, I'm going to put the covers on and give it a bit of a clean up and we might video that as well. But uh, other than that, I'm pretty much going to have to sit around and wait for a month for some new gears from China. In the meantime, I can get acquainted with the machine with this 3D printed one. And uh, I think I'll probably go and make a couple of scratches on those um, wheels there just to make sure that I know I've got those two alignments correct. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. There'll be another one on this particular machine when the new gears arrive. But um, like all of my videos, I hope it's interesting. I don't make any money off these, so at least if you enjoy it, that's something. So anyway, I'll see you for the next one.